Hi, I'm Danielle Downey, Executive Director of Project APIS-M. Project APIS-M funds research that directly addresses the problems of beekeepers and growers. We also put high quality forage back on the agricultural landscape. In our 10 years, we've infused almost $7 million into over 100 projects to improve honeybee health and pollination. Today we're gonna to do some bee colony inspections. We have two colonies to look at. One is small, it came through winter barely, and we've been helping it along and we're hoping that they're doing good and are ready to grow and produce some honey this year. And the other colony came through winter really strong and we expect that we're gonna to have to split them. So we wanna make sure they're not trying to swarm and look at the resources and plan for dividing that colony into two colonies. Here you can see the yellow bees and the black bees. And these are two different varieties of honeybee. These really yellow ones are Italian and the black ones are carnelian. This hive has both because we helped out a small yellow colony with some black bees from the neighbor colony because they're, they're different kinds. So this one has a mix. That's not normally what you would see. So this is a male and you can see his eyes are bigger and he's a little more robust. A colony has one queen, the mother of all these bees, and the rest are mostly workers, up to 60,000 of, work, of the workers, all female. There can be a few thousand drones, and these are the only males, and they don't sting. Even though this is only the first frame, I can tell this is a healthy hive. They have healthy brood. There's pollen and nectar on this frame, and there's a variety of pollen colors, so I know there's good floral abundance right now and diversity. So. Uh, there's a nice developing larvae and they have good brood in the middle here, so this is looking really good. And you can see the pollen, see the rainbow shape pollen stored, of the different colors, yellows and oranges. That's kind of like their pantry. So we've got the pollen, which is our protein source, and then out here is nectar, and that's being cured. So that's from the plants and they have to concentrate the, the sugars and evaporate the water. So this is in the process. And then when it's done, they cap it. So here you can see capped cells. So that's when it got thick enough and concentrated enough, they, they cap it and then it's cured and considered honey. Until then it's nectar. This one has even more brood on it, which is great. So under each one of these capped cells is a bee that's developing. So this colony is gonna grow really fast. Uh, but this one looks like she's just about ready to come out. You ready? Come on out. There she goes. So you can tell she looks a little softer, kind of wet. So she'll groom and eat and by the end of the day she'll be hard to pick out from the rest of the bees. Right here, we see the bees making a cell that hangs down, and that is a, a queen cell. We wanna pay attention to that and see if they're actually making a queen, and they are, so we don't know why yet, but that's important to pay attention. Either they, they're they ready to have two queens and the colony is gonna go through fission and split, or this queen is losing productivity, and so they want a, a new, younger queen. In here we see royal jelly and a little larvae floating on that. And the difference that makes a female egg into a queen or a worker is royal jelly. So they've decided that this larvae is gonna become a queen. And here we have the, the current queen of this colony. You can see her abdomen is a little bit bigger. This queen is called a cordovan queen. It's a color that's really yellow and you can see how her thorax is actually brown instead of black. A lot of people really like these queens because they're kind of golden and they produce very light yellow bees. She has a retinue of bees around her all the time. So normally she'd be laying eggs and she can lay up to 2,000 eggs in one day. Okay, so we're gonna look in the bottom box. So I'm gonna put the top one here. There's a lot of burr comb, which is extra comb, and we can take this and look for varroa mites. We know the queen isn't on here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna shake these bees off and cut this burr comb off the bottom. So if we leave this comb, it'll smash bees on the way in and out, and that's just bad practice because it could be your queen that gets smushed. So I'm gonna shake these bees off.
You see that? Those are varroa mites. That's the worst thing to happen to bees in our lifetime. That parasite is the focus of bee health research all over the world. And this burk home is always a good place to look for mites. When you're opening your colony, you just want to pay special attention to when these get cracked open and notice if you have varroa or not, because sometimes you can detect that you have a, a big problem. They stand out really well against the white larvae. They're much harder to see on an adult bee. Quite a lot of burk home. Wall-to-wall -wall brood. They definitely needed more space before we gave it to them. I mean, clearly the, the bottom boards are not the right distance from the frames, otherwise we wouldn't have all this comb. So the other problem with having equipment that doesn't fit exactly right is it gives space for marauders like wax moths. So the bottom box is gonna have the older bees, the foragers returning. So the meaner bees are gonna be in the bottom. They have an ontogeny of tasks, so there's kind of some typical paths that they go from one task to the next as they age. And they start with stuff close, like feeding babies and cleaning cells and tending the queen. And as they get older and smarter, uh, they do more complicated things towards the periphery of the nest, like handle food. And the last tasks they do are the risky ones, like guarding the entrance or going out foraging. And by using the bee like that through her life, then you get the most amount of work before she might possibly get eaten or killed or have to sting and die. So it's a way for them to be really efficient and divide the labor. Okay, so we're gonna close them up. Put everything back together the way we found it. And let them mind their own business. Ha, ha, ha.